Yo, what's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. In yesterday's video, we kind of kick-started the discussion talking about the format leading into the World Championship LCQ. And today, we'll continue that discussion covering some of the new Zenkai Dash Pack cards. These are the only new cards and new product that are going to be influencing that format. So we have the ban list that took place um, last week, and that's going to take effect on January 1st. And we have these new Zenkai Dash Pack cards that... Uh, the goal of them seems to be to boost older fan favorite archetypes. So we'll take a look at the GT support today, and we're getting our first ever unison with barrier in a pretty weird way. We'll cover that all in the video. If you guys are new here, though, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a video. And of course, if you want to support the channel, there are tons of ways to do so down in the description. But if you guys want to buy or pre-order any cards we talk about in today's video or any trading cards for that matter, it does greatly help me out. If you were to use my link to TCG player, I really do appreciate it. Anyways, let's jump right on into this. We are talking about the GT archetype from set 17 ultimate squad. We're going to do a bit of a refresher is talking about some of the key cards in the archetype. We'll start with the leader. So you start with the spaceship vessel of hope in play, and then you get to uh, basically place a sand under the spaceship. When you attack and draw two cards on your unawakened side, great filtering effect. Awaken release four or less, or one of your unison cards has seven or more markers on it. You may draw two cards then add cards from your life to your hand until you have six life left and flip this card over. So there's a few things with this. Uh, seven or more markers is the exact point to where you can get smoke dragoned, right? Now, from memory, this deck is pretty easily able to awaken on turn two. That means you're generally getting seven markers on your unison by turn two. That's always, or at least most of the time, gonna give your opponent the opportunity to play smoke dragon on you. And this is a archetype that is very, very reliant on its unison. So the fact that you can pretty much always get smoked is a pretty pretty big feels bad unless you can somehow get to like eight markers on turn two but then all your opponent has to do is like swing their leader into the unison and then smoke dragon so that's a big problem uh but this zenkai support does actually aim to fix that issue we'll see or we'll talk about how effective i think it is but yeah that's a relatively big problem um you might want to just try to get as many markers on turn two as you can but i don't know off the top of my head exactly the highest number of markers you can get on turn two if you know that answer leave it down in the comments for me maybe we can try to get to like nine markers on turn two through some crazy combo we'll see what we can do about it but anyways on the awakened side when this card attacks draw one activate main once per turn for a red if you don't have a unison card in play play up to one spaceship from your hand or drop with a marker on it big big problem there is it does not say warp you cannot play a spaceship out of your warp and smoke dragon of course warps the unison unfortunately if it just placed in the drop that would be uh you know a lot better but it doesn't so active main once return for spirit boost 10 if you have five or more energy play up to one red goku gt card with energy cost of eight from your hand and get uh it gets plus five thousand power for the turn there are a few targets for this that we will talk about in this video but yeah going back to ultimate squad this was one of the better red decks of that format it was pretty solid it actually is able to be pretty aggressive and we'll talk about that more later on with how you know this might interact with you know the newly nerfed sin and uh, gogeta deck maybe even crimson as well but let's go into some of the new support so we have the z leader for the archetype but first real quick the spaceship empower red 10 permit this card cannot attack auto limit one if this card has four or more markers on it when this card's played draw one then choose one of your red battle cards and up to one of your red leader cards they get plus 5k for the turn and activate main plus or minus zero place one sand from your hand under this card draw one then add a marker to this card for each card under it up to three so this thing can gain markers very quickly but again you run into the issue of you're usually able um, to be smoked on uh, turn two most of the time but this z leader tries to fix that let's see how effective it is so we have a z leader ss4 goku it goes over this trio leader in particular when at least four or less and it costs two z energy but no regular energy cost that is definitely a good thing auto choose one red unison in your unison area and place one sand in your hand under it when this card attacks draw two cards then add a marker to the chosen card that is incredibly interesting this does not specify that it has to be a spaceship that you put a sand under and draw to that opens up a lot of possibilities maybe you start the game with spaceship and then you um you know kind of anticipate it getting smoked and maybe you build your deck around that like you don't really build too much for like the cards that play from under the spaceship and then maybe you play like baby unison on three and then you tuck a bunch of cards under baby unison and then bam it's like the tankiest unison in the game your opponent can't smoke it you have like 10 things under it so your opponent can't kill it by battle and it's just a unison that auto lives that's an interesting idea. Uh, will you get that much value out of this deck if you don't play the Vessel cards that play from underneath? 
hard to say uh just an idea that kind of just crossed my mind as i'm reading that auto but yeah activate main remove this card from the game choose one red unison with specified cost of one in your unison area add a marker to it and it gains barrier until the end of your opponent's next turn so this aims to protect the spaceship from smoke dragon pretty much in particular because there's not really much else that chooses unisons i wonder if the uh green gohan rare actually says choose or not i don't quite remember if it does but regardless this aims to protect your unison from unison destruction but how effective is this card going to be at doing that unfortunately i don't think it's gonna be very effective you have to look at these decks that don't make z energy super efficiently and i would wager that this is one of those decks that does not really do that all that well two z energy is a hefty cost for that man like you might not even be able to play this thing by turn two if you can't combo enough like let's say you go first you can't combo because you didn't attack right so turn two what are you gonna do attack with your leader maybe combo a card from hand attack with a battle card and combo a card from hand that's a minus two to play this guy and the one thing i really hate about the z leader is that it removes itself from the game if you want to use the effect to protect your unison so i guess theoretically you could get this thing online before your opponent has access to smoke if you go first typically uh but yeah losing your 2z energy investment i don't love it like it's a really big minus from hand it's not all that great to be honest because all right cool your opponent just passes on smoke on two they do whatever else they want to do and then the next turn they just smoke because if you're going to go back to back to back to back z leaders just because you're afraid of potentially getting smoked you're losing like your entire hand by the time you play the third z leader right that's just never going to happen in realistic dragon ball so i don't think this quite kind of uh i don't think this really hits the mark they're trying to hit it's an interesting idea for sure but yeah i like the rest of the z leader more than i actually like that effect so maybe there is some sort of strategy where again you play a higher cost unison loaded up full of cards it would probably be baby unison because that's the only other unison that really does things with cards underneath it yeah i do like that idea we'll see how it kind of pans out let's talk about more of the support for this deck all right we have pan heartfelt support the three energy 10k battle card activate main if you have a goku gt in play play this card from under a unison that's super easy to do in this deck typically Activate main once per turn. If you have three or more energy, you switch this card to rest mode. Add up to two cards from your life to your hand. Then choose a Goku GT or a Trunks GT in your battle area, and they get plus 5k for the turn. That's actually really huge for multiple reasons. One, I mean, you're getting free power in your battle cards, and this deck can play a lot of cards that benefit from increased power. But besides that, you can take up to two life. That's a big, big thing for this deck because there was a big debate back in set 17 whether this deck should play Raditz Super Combo or Krillin Super Combo. If you don't know Krillin Super Combo, it basically lets you draw one while you have a unison in play. So in this deck, that was always going to allow you to draw a card because you always had a spaceship in play. And uh, it was much, much more difficult to actually remove the unison before Smoke Dragon came out than it is now. Now, so the big problem with Krillin though is that it wasn't searchable. So like you'd rather play Raditz, but Raditz wouldn't always be live because sometimes you can get stuck at six life. This card actually fixes that, which is huge for the deck. Then we have Goku, Pan, and Trunks, Journey to the Cosmos. We have a three drop 15k, Deflect, Unique. Uh, the first thing is activate main limit one for a red. If you have two or more energy, you can play this card from under a unison that's also big this doesn't specify spaceship so you can play it from under baby that's really good uh all right then we have auto and this card attacks it gains plus 5k for the turn and choose one choose one of your opponent's battle cards of 15k power or less and ko it or if this card's power is 25k or more it gains double strike for the turn or if you have four or more energy you may pay two red if you do play up to one goku pan trunks galactic explorers which is the classic boss monster for the deck and uh play on top of this card in active mode so you might be thinking to yourself like it's got the same four energy restriction it's got the same three energy cost why would i want to play the eight drop over this journey to the cosmos card the main reason is you're getting four attacks because you swing with this thing trigger the auto and then you get to play the galactic explorers on top in active mode and then the card itself when you activate spirit boost will gain triple attack so that's actually four attacks at 30 or 35k which is um pretty insane like that's a, that's, a, that's a lot of attacks so um yeah it's gonna be weak certain floodgates but i mean i guess you would tech for that right like by playing pan heartfelt support you can put yourself to four which activates beerus ball so this being a three energy play your fourth energy can be used for beerus ball or you know depending on matchup you might need a different answer different floodgates but you get the idea right so that four energy play that four energy turn can be used for a 35k quad attack which does seem interesting and the fact that this thing says play it from under a unison not under a spaceship that's kind of making my previous idea of just loading up a baby unison full of cards seem a little bit more legit i don't remember if all the other cards from this archetype just play from under a unison or they have to play specifically from under a spaceship 
But if they play from under any unison, I'm actually getting a bit more excited to build this deck. I'm not going to lie. But anyways, let's look at a couple more things. So remember, Pan Heartfelt Support. Um, none of this stuff is limit one. Yes, the second activate main is once per turn. But the first activate main just doesn't have any restrictions. And as long as you have a Goku GT in play, you can play as many copies of this card as possible. And then activating once per turn, that's only going to be once per turn across like copies of the card itself. It's not limit one where it's like you can only do one effect of one of these cards per turn. So basically what I'm getting at is you can use multiple copies of this to boost up Hyper Evolution Goku. There's also another free play pan you can use from a much older dash pack that I believe will do the same thing. So if you wanted to, you could go for the Hyper Evolution burn game plan. This probably still isn't great, albeit God Ceiling's gone. This is an SCR without Deflect that gets a little bit stronger, not gonna lie. So that does seem kind of interesting. But yeah, something I wanted to point out because this doesn't have any hard restrictions, talking about Pan Heartfelt Support, and it is a potential win condition you could go for. And now I think the only color that's going to be able to deal with these like crazy big boss monsters, or at least like negate the player effects of them is yellow. Like you got to play for death blaster. Like yeah, blue, you can go for dirty burst, which uh, I guess would also stop this thing. Cause it has to attack to burn. So yeah, I guess blue does have a good answer, but then they're open to Broly crown and that opens up a whole nother can of worms. So yeah, it definitely gets a lot more interesting with uh, God ceiling gone. And then finally, the last thing I wanted to mention are these specific cards, Goku One Hit Wonder and Surprise Attack SSB Vegeta. Both of these are free play 15Ks in this very deck. So this deck has potential to be quite aggressive. Like you have really valuable one drop plays. You have multiple one drop 20K attackers. You have these free 15K attackers. And you know, how does this stack up to the rest of the format? The rest of the format pretty much being Sin, Gogeta, and Crimson with some other things sprinkled in. Well. I think that this is a matchup where Gogeta losing that bean effect is actually highly relevant because again, you're hitting them with tons of 15 Ks, tons of 20 Ks, and they lose a lot of value by not having that sensu bean type of effect. So that's a big, big benefit for the GT deck. I think against the Sin deck, they still have the uh, the bean effect via Dragon Thunder as well as their Z leader. So on a turn where they're 25 K, it's probably gonna be quite hard to do damage to them. So that might not go so well, but the fact they can't crit your life is great. But then on the flip side, sin is like an auto unison killing deck so that might be an auto l for spaceship i'm not 100 sure i'd have to test that matchup out and see how it goes maybe you get enough markers for it to live but we'd have to see uh and then we have the crimson matchup um yeah i don't know if gt has the same power output that sin or gogeta have to really compete with crimson because as a crimson player gogeta and sin are not easy i would say they're favorable matchups but they're not easy. Like if you don't open the right, you know, sort of combination of combo cards or your opponent had a really nice double strike crit early on, which is no longer a thing. Uh, you know, that matchup could be a little difficult, I guess. This is not outputting the same amount of power, but like I've been saying with this whole strategy of like just playing a baby unison and using the Z leader to tuck a bunch of cards, you're gonna be able to possibly play a mid range game where your leader has a pseudo sense of being via the baby unison. You have an unkillable unison that's gonna continue to draw cards as well as kill board. That's a really cool strategy that actually has me really intrigued so yeah i think i might go build a deck right now actually after recording this but anyways i wanted the comments below what you think about this deck what do you find interesting about it i'm actually finding more and more interesting stuff the more i talk about it but uh if you find this archetype interesting let me know thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one